Hi guys, what's up? It's Fern. Welcome back to another planty video. Thank you so much for joining me. So today I'm going to be talking all about the plants in my collection that I think are the most underrated. The plants that I don't really see people talk about a whole bunch that I just feel like deserve a little bit more hype. I love these plants so much, so maybe you will too. I believe I have eight of them on this list and I'm very excited to show them to you and talk about them. But first, I'm gonna be talking about today's sponsor. All right, so today's video is kindly sponsored by Native, which I'm sure if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that they're one of my all time favorite brands. I've been using their deodorant for years before they ever even reached out to me. And the reason that I get so excited about talking about their products is because they are the only aluminum free, cruelty free vegan deodorant that I found that works really well. They also now offer their product in this awesome paperboard packaging, making it a more sustainable product and a really easy swap if you're trying to switch over your products to being more environmentally friendly. I really appreciate that Native is offering their same awesome product in this great plastic free packaging. Native deodorant holds up all day, even through exercise, and it's not sticky, it dries really quickly, and the scents that they offer are amazing. The scents that I have been using lately are cucumber and mint, which is a really nice light fresh scent and lavender and rose, which I know I've talked about before. I just love this one. It's one of my top favorites. They actually have their limited edition holiday scents launched right now, which sound freaking amazing. They have a sugar cookie, a candy cane, and a fresh mistletoe. Honestly, I might have to stock up and order some of those as well because they just sound so good. If you would like to try out native deodorants for yourself, which I highly recommend that you do, I have a link which is gonna give you 25% off down below. So three plastic free deodorants are normally $39, but if you use that link, you'll get them for $29. So it's such a great deal. Thank you so much to Native for partnering with me on this video. Now let's hop into the plants. Okay, you guys. So the first plant that I'm going to be talking about in this video is a philodendron. And I will say that this plant is picking up more speed in popularity than it was before. Like I feel like a year or two ago, not many people had heard of this plant, but now within the past year, it's become a little bit more popular, but still not as popular as it should be because it is incredibly beautiful. And that is, okay, mine looks crazy. So please forgive, I need to tame her, which I will be doing. Maybe I will film that for an upcoming video. But yes, Philodendron Campos Portuanum, in my opinion, is so underrated. Ideally, she would be climbing because they get the cutest shaped leaves in their more mature form. I'll put a photo somewhere on the screen. Okay, so look at how long mine is. Like, she's vining. I do plan to chop her up propagator and then grow her on a moth pole. Uh, I just haven't done it yet. I, like, I just kept putting it off because uh, she's just been living her best life. But honestly, it's probably going to look even better now that I have so will have so many cuttings to work with. I will give you a close up of the leaves here. Look at that. Oh my goodness. It's so pretty. So something I've noticed is that these leaves can get quite dark, especially under a grow light. This plant does live in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. Oh, it just has the prettiest foliage. Like look at those leaves. They are slightly velvety. I'm gonna say they're more of a satin finish because they're not as velvety as say the Philodendron Milano Chrysum, but yeah, they do have a beautiful sheen to them. So this plant offers us a really cool leaf shape in its mature form. But what else is great about it is that it is just such a fast grower. Like this thing is constantly putting off a new leaf. I've chopped this a couple of times already. I've had this for less than a year. I've already chopped it a couple of times and yeah, it's just growing wild. I swear it always has a new leaf on the way. Even now it just unfurled that leaf on the end and it does already have a new one that is starting to emerge. I'm very excited to get this plant on a pole. I think it's going to be so fun to watch it grow and to try to get those more mature leaves. I actually have another one of these. If you saw my Botanica's unboxing uh, about a month ago, so I'm probably gonna end up combining them both and growing them up a moss pole. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, definitely just if you're looking for a more, uh, just a philodendron that's a little bit different, really fast grower, easy to care for, and on the more affordable uh, side of the price spectrum as well. Definitely a really good one to check out. Okay, I'm just gonna show one of these cuttings. Okay, so the next one that I have to show you is a Hoya, and I... 
I am obsessed with this Hoya right now, you guys. It's such a common Hoya, but I have not owned one until recently. I just got this as a cutting in a trade and it does not disappoint. I don't know why there's not more hype around this Hoya. Uh, okay, so this is my Hoya Crimson Princess. I'm just gonna take her out of the <clears throat> out of the vessel. Like I said, I just received this as a cutting about a month ago as well. And I've just had it propagating in water, but I will show you what it looks like. I have multiple cuttings of this, but like, are you kidding me? Look at those leaves. This is so pretty. People are out there paying big money for Hoyas that are not half as pretty as this. It's just, it's just so beautiful. I think it was even more pink before when I got it in the mail. So if you have it under good lighting, you can get that really pink variegation and then it will over time fade to more of a cream. You can see there's some lighter pink on these leaves back here. Uh, you guys know I have my big basket of Hoya Crimson Queen, which I absolutely love as well. I would put that in this video too, but I decided to opt for this one just because I'm so wowed by it lately. And I think that this gets even less recognition than the Crimson Queen. So yeah, people are really sleeping on this in my opinion, honestly. I don't know if it's because they're common. You can just, you know, find them at a big box store and people just, I don't know. Plants are kind of like that. Like, some of the prettiest plants are common plants, but they don't get the recognition that they deserve because they're affordable and they're easy to find. But honestly, I disagree with that. This is just amazing. I love it. Can't wait to see it grow. I will show you the roots on this one. That is what they are looking like so far. And I'm just so excited to pot this up. I can probably actually pot it up in, I don't know, the next month or so. And I'm just thrilled to watch this grow. So. Yeah, go and get you a Hoya Crimson Princess if you don't have one yet. Okay, next I'm going to be talking about my string of spades here. Oh, it's getting a little tangled. It's only two strands, but they still find a way to get tangled. Okay, so here it is. Uh, this one, it's kind of hard to show, but I'm gonna try to show you. These are my favorite leaves down here. They're the biggest ones. Focus, there we go. Look at how cute. This is like, it's very similar to String of Hearts, but it's all green. It doesn't have the purple backs or anything like that. And it's not heart shaped. It's just spade shaped or like, I don't know. They kind of remind me of like shark teeth or something. They're kind of just like little triangles. And I just think that it's a fun twist on String of Hearts. And I like that I'm getting some of these bigger leaves um, down on the lower portion of the vine because that's something that I really struggle with. I know this one is so hard to show, I'm sorry. But that's something that I really struggle with with my string of hearts is I just get these like minuscule little hearts at the end, which is something I'm trying to work on. Like I'm playing around with different lighting and fertilizing and whatnot. But this one has just been so happy. I care for it very similar to a string of hearts. It has a very similar growth rates, like it's constantly growing. And I don't know, it's just fun to have something that's like a little bit different and a little bit less common than String of Hearts. You don't really see it as often. I guess this would be a good option too for people who don't like um, colorful plants, like String of Hearts is... Like String of Hearts has the purple and pinkish tones to it, but this is all green. Also maybe a little bit more dainty. They're not as thick. They aren't like paper thin. They have a little bit of thickness to this to them, but they aren't as thick as String of Hearts. I'm just really excited to um, keep growing this. I'm probably gonna propagate it and plant it back in the top so I can get a more full little pot and just keep growing this out and seeing what I can end up with. Yeah, I just think it's really cool and I don't see a lot of people talk about it. Okay, next, you guys, I have a Tenanthi to talk about. Look at her. She is so pretty. Oh my goodness, I love this. It's just so bright and vibrant and honestly so easygoing. So this is my Tenanthi Laversiana. Now, I received this as a cutting, you guys, um, in the summer. I'm going to say mid-summer, so a few months ago now, and I rooted it in water. Uh, which went really well, rooted really quickly. It was, um, I don't know if you guys will remember, but it was doing a leaf curl thing when I was rooting it in water, but as soon as I potted it up, it totally stopped that and the leaves flattened out. Um, so if you do grow one of these from a cutting and you see some leaf curling, 
I'm assuming it's normal. I don't know what happened to mine, but uh, rooted it in water, planted it up in pond. This needs to be like cleaned or repotted or something. So um, I know it has some algae, but, but it is absolutely thriving. This plant is honestly so easy. And I don't know if it's because I have mine in pond. I don't have any experience growing this plant in soil. Um, however, I do have a different Tenanthe in soil and it's very easy going as well. So I don't know, are these like the easy going cousins to the Calathea? Maybe if you really love Calathea, but you struggle with them, try out a Tenanthe. I'm definitely keen to try out more of these. It's, they're just so beautiful. They have that same beautiful, like painted looking foliage. And yeah, love the yellow variegation. That's very on trend right now. Honestly, I think I'm gonna take a photo of this and post it to my Instagram for next week because um, yeah, this is just such a beautiful plant and I can't believe how much it's grown. It's grown so fast. It does not fuss for me at all. It's just been an absolute dream and I just, it doesn't even get a lot of light, you guys. It sits on my desk. So it's like pulled back from my south facing window, maybe gets like a tiny bit of direct sun on the rare sunny day that we get lately, but mostly like low to medium indirect light, I would say for the spot that it's in. And it's funny because this is a plant, well, I guess this is the perfect like plant for this video because this is a plant that I have seen in plant stores um, a lot before and I've just never felt drawn to it or picked it up. But when I was gifted a cutting, I went ahead and grew it and now I'm just, I'm such a big fan of it. So I'm so glad that um, I ended up with this plant. Okay, the next one is in my bedroom. I have to go grab it. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think I have to stand to show this one, you guys. Oh my goodness, look at this plant. So I've shown this a little bit, oops, I'm getting caught to it. I've shown this a little bit on my channel, but honestly not a whole lot. So I'm going to take this moment to show her off again. I feel like she's grown a lot since I got her. Look at how long this one is. Oh, she's really trailing now. Okay, so this is my trailing jade or, oh gosh, what is the, what is the newest name for her? Okay, I will put the most recent name that she's been classified into on the screen. But before this plant was reclassified, this was a Senecio Jacobsii? Jacobinsii? One of those. But it's most commonly known as a trailing jade. And yeah, this is honestly one of my latest obsessions. I bought this because I wanted more trailing plants for my bed frame. I have a canopy bed frame now. Um, and I had seen this one posted on TikTok. I've talked about this whole story again, so I won't go too much into it, but I saw this plant on TikTok. And ever since I saw it on TikTok, I decided that I really wanted it. I love trailing plants, but I had just never got it for like a year and a half. It would kind of be in the back of my mind, but I had just never picked one up. So when I saw this big, beautiful, lush basket at one of my favorite plant stores, I of course had to grab it. This was only $14.99 as well. So although it looks like a jade plant and it has the common name trailing jade, it's actually not a jade. Um, and it does trail like this. But yeah, it has those big succulent paddle type leaves and obviously it trails. So these can trail up to around four feet long. So I'm so excited to watch it grow even more. It's been doing not bad um, where I have it growing in my bedroom. It sits a few feet away from a south facing window that is kind of covered. So it doesn't really get any direct sunlight. It gets, I would say medium indirect light and it's doing okay. I haven't noticed it really suffering or anything. So I'm just going to keep growing it in that spot for now. But if you're into trailing plants and you want something a little bit different and you like more succulent looking plants, definitely check this one out. This and the Hoya Compacta to me kind of have the same type of vibe. Like I love plants like that. This plant, Hoya Compacta, one of my all time favorites and Burrow's Tail Succulent, one of my all time favorites as well. I just love like lush succulent looking trailing plants, I guess. So yeah, I'm really into this. Um, don't see anybody really post about it except for that person that I saw it on, on TikTok. So yeah, I just have to spread the love because more people should have this plant. Okay, next I have a philodendron. I feel like this is a little bit similar to the philodendron Camposportuanum because I think that this is gaining a little bit more popularity. The popularity it deserves in my opinion. Um, yes, this is just, it's one of my favorites. And it is my philodendron subhostatum. 
honestly, I could put the Philodendron Hostatum on this list as well. The Philodendron Silver Sword, I feel like that plant deserves way more hype. But it does get some hype, so I'm not going to put it on this list. <laughs> But that's one of my all-time favorites as well. Okay, so this is my philodendron subhostatum. So when you see it from the front, it's like, okay, she's a cute little green philodendron. You know, pretty shiny leaves, okay. But then when you see her from the back, my friends. Bam. Oh my goodness. Okay, just ignore. Mine is a little bit damaged because the leaf was having some trouble unfurling. But look at that red back. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Look at this one too. Oh, this one's so dark, look at that. Oh my goodness, she is so pretty. And the way that the, okay, so when you're looking at it here on my camera in this lighting, the from the front it looks just like a pretty solid dark green, but when um, you have this plant in the sun in the summertime, you can see when it shines through the leaf, you can see the red back and it's just, oh, it's so pretty. I honestly love this plant so stinking much. It's been a super easy grower for me. Honestly, I haven't really done anything special. I would like to get it on a better support situation here. This is a little bit flimsy. I would like to actually repot this and yeah, get it set up with a different a different type of um, stake or pole situation. But yeah, in my experience so far, it's been very easy to grow. I can see that it is just about ready to start pushing out a new leaf there so i'm very excited to see that yeah i don't know i just feel like it's so pretty i feel like the backs just make it so special but even the fronts are beautiful as well i don't see people post this plant a lot i don't see people talk about this plant a lot um like i said a little bit more than um than in the past it's kind of picking up in popularity but yeah, I just love it so much. A very easy plant and I definitely recommend it if you're looking for something a little bit different. Okay, we're almost done. I'm going to talk about a Hoya now and then I'm going to talk about a Philodendron as the last one, which is probably my top underrated house plant. Um, okay, so let's start with this Hoya. Okay, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this plant on there recently, but this is my Hoya Kodata Sumatra. And yes, I am going to tell you why I am so in love with this plant lately and why I just feel like it deserves a little bit more recognition. And that is because of the fuzziness of the leaves. This is definitely my fuzziest Hoya. I don't know if you're going to be able to see... Um, the layer of fuzz it's on the bottom and the top of the leaf it's honestly so soft and fuzzy you guys and watching this new leaf here come in as a baby was probably it was probably the cutest leaf i've ever seen come in i mean the leaves on my hoya serpents are very cute as well but yeah i just couldn't believe how hairy it was and the way that hoya leaves come in they start off really tiny and then they expand so i'm pretty sure that this is fully expanded now for this new one um however it's not completely hardened off you can see it's a lot softer and just different in texture and look honestly than the more mature ones so when they're more mature they get this really thick hard like this is a sturdy feeling leaf and they have these kind of like rippled edges it's just such a cool plant in both the like mature hardened leaves and watching the baby leaves come in it was truly such a joy watching this leaf come in i'm pretty sure that this also gets like fluffy fuzzy looking blooms i have not yet had this bloom for me but I will definitely be keeping you posted if it ever does. It has a new vine coming in here, which even has like, I'm probably not gonna be able to see on the camera, but even the vine has little fine hairs on it. I just think it's so sweet. I love hairy plants. There's probably Hoyas out there that are more hairy than this one. I'm not really sure. I don't know a lot about like the more obscure types of Hoya. Definitely check this Hoya out. I do see them around, like it's not super uncommon or anything. I was just so taken aback with um, the whole experience of that new leaf coming in. So yeah, definitely a Hoya that I will recommend and definitely one of my favorite Hoyas now. Okay, so the last plant I feel like I've shown a lot lately, I guess this can serve as a little bit of an update on it as well. But this is by far one of the most underrated plants, in my opinion, in my collection, and that is my Philodendron Painted Lady. Here she is. So I think she's actually been featured in a couple a couple of my most recent videos. I put her on this moss pole in one, and then I watered her in my last water with me video and i've talked about her before so i'm gonna keep it as brief as possible but this plant it just i think that it deserves way more hype 
It is so pretty and it is variegated. It's not the traditional like white or yellow, um, like splashy or sectoral variegation that you would see, but it's this very like, I don't even know how to describe it. It almost looks like a painting or I don't know, like. Okay, I'm editing and I just made this connection right now that that's why it's called Painted Lady. It looks like it's painted on. I was filming and I said that and it didn't even connect in my brain. But now I'm watching that back and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it looks painted. It looks painted. Or I don't know, like a more marbled variegation, I suppose. But it's very different than any variegation that I've seen before on any of my other plants. And and not only does it get that beautiful variegation, but the new leaves can come out this really pretty like orangey yellow color as well. And this plant really, you can get a lot of different shades um, and tones in this plant depending on what lighting you have it under. So yeah, it's very easy going, a very fast grower, um, definitely a really resilient plant. It has these beautiful pink petioles. Like look at those petioles. It's so pretty, she's just so pretty. And I feel like I'm always saying that she's so underrated and I love Philodendron Painted Lady, but it's for good reason, honestly. She's such a great plant. I highly recommend if you are interested at all to pick one up if you come across them. They're usually not outrageously priced either. And I'm sure it's something that you could probably find in a trade or something like that. Like I said, they're very vigorous growers. I'm so excited to see how she grows now that I have her on this moss pole and she's also living in a cabinet. So she's really getting, you know, the life that she deserves. Now the mini update that I wanted to give was on this broken leaf. So she had a leaf snap off and I was showing it in the video where I repotted her and put her on this moss pole and it wasn't like completely snapped off and it was still green. So I had a couple of people comment that, you know, if you just make a what's it called, like a brace support thingy with like tape or something that you have around, then in some cases the plant can actually like repair itself and the leaf will survive. So I did just that. Uh, if you can see, I have the leaf taped on right here. This is the petiole that was snapped. It was snapped like right, right there where it connects. Uh, so I taped it up and honestly, you guys, I think it's working. It looks so good. It's been like probably 10 days and the leaf is still completely green and I feel like it's standing up a little bit taller than it was before. So I think it might be repairing itself. How freaking cool would that be? I can't wait to see what happens with that. I don't know how long I should wait before I take off the tape, but I'm gonna be waiting a long time, I think, because I don't want to take it off too early. Yeah, just thought I would update you guys. I just thought that that was amazing. I feel like it did slow down the growth on this new leaf a little bit. You can see it's not as tall as the older leaf. Um, but that's okay, that's fine. And she already has another one on the way. Like she just grows so fast. She's always doing the most. I love her so much. All right, you guys, that is it. Yes, I think I talked about all eight of them. I hope that you enjoyed seeing those plants and hearing a little bit about them. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. I would love to chat with you. Do you agree with me? Do you own any of these plants? What plants do you think are underrated? I would especially love to hear your opinions on that. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more planty content. And once again, thank you so much to Native for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in trying out Native deodorant, you can click the link down below in the description box for 25% off. Okay, thank you guys so much. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Try